Hey guys, this is Pratik from solsticeretouch.com. Uh, today I got a good question about light fall off in studio shots. Now like this example here shot by Christopher Lua, you'll notice that if you have a light modifier that is very direct and has quite a lot of fall off, you'll get this effect where you'll have the center being exposed properly and the ends having a lot of shadow. This typically happens also when you're doing beauty shots with a beauty dish and you have the exposure fixed on her face but with shadow progressing as it goes downwards. This also happens if you, you see people using uh, beauty dishes um, in full length shots or other situations where you see a lot of shadow at the bottom. Now they wanted to know how to fix this and there was a quick method that I had to use that I learned how to use uh, to fix this effectively that I wanted to show you guys. So the first thing that I want you I want you to pay attention to is kind of my processing. Now what I'm going to do is now that I have the shot open here, I'm going to go ahead and open object. Now the difference is instead of open image, when I hold shift, it turns into open object. So we're going to basically be opening this image as a smart object. So basically what a smart object does is once the image opens from camera raw you can go back into camera raw by just double clicking the thumbnail here the beauty of this is if you want to make changes back in the raw file again it allows you to do so so let me go ahead and cancel for a second and I'm gonna basically duplicate this smart object and use the benefit of my raw file to correct the fall off that happens in the file. So pay attention here because this is a really important step. Go ahead and right click the title of the layer and hit new smart object via copy. You cannot hit command J or you cannot hit duplicate layer you must hit new smart object via copy. Again right click new smart object via copy. The difference is if you hit just duplicate layer it does look the same but what will happen is the changes made on the duplicate will also be made on the background as if they're mirroring each other and we don't want this effect for this tutorial so again right click new smart object via copy we will set up the second layer now what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on the thumbnail and we're going to basically adjust the parameters of the raw file on this duplicate image so we're gonna bump up the exposure quite heavily so we have a lot of leverage. Now we're going to hit OK. Now once it's loaded we're going to use a layer mask set to black. So the way to do that is you can come down here by holding Alt or Option based on if you're a Mac or PC you can click on the layer mask and it will set to black automatically. If it doesn't, hit command or control I and it will inverse the color from white to black. Now we want to set it to black because we're going to paint in the areas that we want better exposed. Once we have a black mask, we're going to go to our paintbrush, make sure that it is set to white with a very delicate setting. What we're going to do now is essentially paint in all the areas that were dark so we're balancing the whole image out. We're actually just the model. So essentially what we're doing here is compensating for the fall off that occurred based on the modifier that we were using. Now I'm not going to be too aggressive with this tutorial because I don't want to overdo it but this should get you an idea of what basically happens when we use smart objects to correct lighting shifts. The benefit of using a mask with this is being able to have that fine control over exactly how much light you want, where you want it, and you can go back and forth because you have a mask. Now this part is basically based on your eye and how far you want to go. So for example now we can click on and off on the layer itself just to see the change that we've done. It looks really delicate but it looks 
to the exact amount that I would ass I would like if I had fixed the issue on set and used a softer modifier, for example, or maybe even a bigger dish or brought the dish, you know, closer in or anything of that matter. And the other good thing about using smart objects for exposure changes like this is it is better than using curves because what happens is if you use the curve on a regular image you're basically stuck to the information that the image has once you've opened the raw file so let's say you open the raw file normally and use a curve to adjust exposure you get issues sometimes in areas that are really dark that does that doesn't have enough information with smart objects you're essentially using the raw file and the unlimited potential it has with exposure and the data to bring up um, every area that you undercompensated with. So you're able to get these big changes and they look much more natural without losing the fidelity to the color and uh, any other artifacts that typically happen when you force it with curves um, in areas that don't have information to begin with. So that's typically how I like to fix my fall off. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot from this tutorial. It's something that I use on a typical and daily basis. Well, that's it, guys. If you have any questions at all, don't feel afraid to contact me on my website at solsticeretouch.com.